Well, it's Sunday night, getting late. Some of you are already in bed asleep, but I don't have a schedule that I keep. I just go to bed whenever I feel like it, and I usually wait late. <clears throat> now, I've been reading comment after comment about family reunions. One thing I've discovered is they're not like they used to be. And you know, that's a sad thing. The family reunions kept, kept us together, kept us in contact with each other. All those cousins, those wonderful aunts and uncles that we had, they're all gone now. None of them around. In fact, Mama was the last one to go. And when she went, so went the family reunion. Nobody wanted to have one anymore. But while I was thinking about that, something popped in my mind about when I was living in Tennessee. Now, my sister was working in the sheriff's office there in the same town. And one day, <clears throat> man walked into her office, introduced himself, and said, uh, I would like to speak to the sheriff. She said, well, he's out of town this week. Is there anything I can do to help you? He said, well, maybe you can. My wife is out in the car. She's waiting outside for me. And we're on our way to Tennessee or south, southeast Tennessee and Virginia. We're in search of relatives. We live in the state of Washington. Oh, my. He went on to say, my wife's grandfather, or maybe it was a great-grandfather. This is second-hand story because she told it to me. He was sheriff of Anderson County here years ago. Now, you could look around the room, look up near the ceiling, and there was, was a row of photographs, one right after the other, former sheriffs of Anderson County. And I don't know if what he was looking for was on that wall or not, and he probably wouldn't have recognized it, the picture if he did see it. And he said, my wife's grandfather was Sheriff Anderson County. She wanted to see, stop here and see if we might could get some information about him. Maybe you have some, an archive of, of uh, photographs, reports and things. And we're kind of working on our family history now. And so we decided to make this trip all the way to Tennessee and Virginia. And so, in the course of the conversation, my sister said, what was, what is, I don't know if it was his name or his wife's grandfather. I think it was his name. He had not given his name yet. <clears throat> and uh, she said, what is your name? And he said, well, it's a rather unusual name. I doubt if you've ever heard it before. Um, it's Estep. Well, she just popped up out of her chair and she says, 
That's my name. Our maiden name was East Step. Well, this just caught the adrenaline going with both her and this gentleman there. And he said, oh, will you please wait? I've got to go get my wife. She's not going to believe this. She's just not going to believe this. So he went to get his wife and brought her back and they started talking and he wanted to see if he could get information on on the family from t uh, Southeast Tennessee and Virginia. And my sister said, well, I don't know a whole lot, but my sister that lives here is working on our family history now. She's been doing a lot of research and she would be the one that you want to talk to. So, of course, I did not meet the man. They went on, after they finished their conversation there, they went on to Virginia and she, we never heard from him again. But in the course of conversation, he's telling about his home in the state of Washington. Now, this has been, oh gosh, nearly, I guess almost 40 years ago. And he said, we, we have a cabin up in the mountains, in the mountain, Mount St. Helens. You've heard of that. You've all heard of it. You've heard about the volcano that erupted about 1980 at Mount St. Helens. That's where his cabin was. And at the time, they were talking of the, about the people who evacuated <clears throat> because that, that volcano was going to erupt and they had to get the people off that mountain. But there were those people who were stubborn no, I'm not leaving. I'm staying right here. And again, as you may recall, one of those men that refused to leave his cabin in Mount St. Helens was named Harry Truman. Of course, that he got a lot of recognition from that with a name like Harry Truman some people you, you could fool into thinking it was Harry Truman, the president. But no, that just happened to be his name. And he was a neighbor to this visitor to Tennessee. He said he lived just across the way from where we had our cabin. <clears throat> and on Saturday nights, all of the neighbors would get together and and in the conversation with my sister they were making comparisons about family traits and uh, he said we were we're a musical family and my sister said well so is my family there's been music in our family all along that's one of the similar traits. And, well, the conversation just gets a little more exciting each thing that they talk about because they see the uh, uh, resemblance between the East Step families. And then my sister got very interested in Mount St. Helen. She just couldn't believe she's talking to somebody that lived there when the volcano erupted and knew that Harry Truman. And so, uh, well, let's see, where was I going with that? Anyway, this is one of the things that we never expect to happen in our lives the people we meet, the people 
we discover we're related to and would never have guessed it. Uh, it's like the trip I took to South Dakota and we were watching the, mm, I forget the name of the group that did put on the air show. But there I was in a crowd of, oh, less than 50,000 people on the front row. And the lady walks up to me, punches me on the shoulder. And she said, are you the lady that was at the VIP breakfast this morning whose brother's name was Estep? And I said, yes, I am. And she says, well, my husband's family are Estep's. And they come from Tennessee and Virginia. I said, well, you can tell your husband we're definitely related. If he from his family from that part of the country, we are related. So South Dakota, Kentucky, Tennessee, Washington State, you don't know where they're going to come from, do you? And it's pretty interesting when you get into conversations with someone like that. And this man was so excited when he found out that my sister had the same last name as his, which he pointed out. It's not a very common name. So I thought you might appreciate that to go along with the family reunions. And we had some really good family reunions way back when. We go, we would go to my Uncle Paris's house. He had a small house. He was at the end of a dirt road. You know, most of the streets um, in Middleburg, Kentucky, had the names of British streets, like Worcester Street, and, oh, I can't even think of, of all of those names, but you would recognize and probably can recite a few yourself. But that's what the streets were named after because um, it was the Duke of Cumberland that came over and, and the, the first golf course in the United States is in Middleborough, is still there. And it was named after the Duke of Cumberland. Now I think, oh yes, the reunions, the reunions. I've got a picture, wish I'd gotten it out, of one of those reunions. And I probably was about 12 years old at that time. And there are long tables out in front of my uncle's house. They, I don't know where they got those tables back then, but they're spread out and there's food on, all the way down the tables and everybody's standing up lined up on the back side. And I can name almost every person. There must have been, oh, I'm gonna say about 40 people, at least 40 people, children and adults. And my aunt and uncle from um, Oklahoma were there. They had, were the ones that had come the farthest distance because this was a long time ago. This was back in the 1940s. And so they had driven a long way to come to, to our family reunion. And the funny thing about them was it was my mother's sister her name was Riddy, and her husband's name was, see, my mother was a Rowlett. So there was Riddy Rowlett, and she married Floyd Estep. My dad's name was also Estep. So, two sisters married first cousin. So you had the family history on for both sides of the family. 
that my cousin worked on for years. He uh, taught at a small college. Let's see, it was called, uh, I think it was called Ada College, or maybe it was Norman, Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah, small college there. So he got me started working on family history because he had traveled by car instead of picking up the phone and working on a computer. He didn't know anything about computers back then. And in order to get the family history and a chart on all these aunts and uncles and cousins, there were a lot of them, he had to drive. And he would tell about it how far back in the hills he would go to find some of the, the homes. Very interesting man. And that's how I got my start on the family history. He sent me copies of all of his charts and they had notes on them where whatever the information was on that chart, he noted where he got the information, which person he interviewed to find out these things. So this information was all word of mouth. It wasn't in the state records. Well, some of his information was, but most of this on the family charts came from individuals from Oh, I don't know how many families, a lot of families. So he worked hard on the family history. You should keep notes, keep anything that your hands come across that give you dates and names. Get your big shoebox. That's what we used to use when we wanted to save thing, we put it in a big shoe box, stuck it in the top shelf of the closet. So, that's going to be about it on, on the family reunions. There's not one this year. It's usually held in August, but it's been a long time now. And I miss those cousins that I used to play with. They were so much fun. Had one cousin that could play the piano like you would not believe. All you had to do was say, can you play Moon River? Well, of course he knew Moon River, just like we knew Moon, Moon River, but this was before Moon River that, <laughs> that we were asking these questions. So whatever song you mentioned, He'd say, hum it for me. So if you started humming, those 10 fingers hit the keys of our old upright piano and never missed a note. He'd never played it before. And we were amazed at his talent. Oh, how well he could play and he'd never had piano lessons. Then there was Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary was what, well, it's what we would call a holy roller. You know, I don't mean to offend anyone about their religion and all, but she was a holy roller. She came to our house. She sat down at the piano, and of course all of the music from her was uh, hymns, the old gospel hymns. She had that piano dancing across the floor. Just unbelievable. The talent that the people had back then, natural talent. My brother, he played the guitar, the harmonica, the mandolin. Those were the only one instrument that my mother told me about. But he was playing when he was 12 years old. 
when he was eight years old, he had been invited to the mayor's birthday party to entertain. You can see this little eight-year-old boy with his guitar. He's going to sing and play at the mayor's birthday party. Mama told me that story. I said, no, I never forget. So, treasure the family you got. You know I have to cry every time I tell a story. I have a friend that I can just look at her and if she thinks I'm going to tell something sad, she starts crying before I even get the first word out of my mouth. We tease her a lot about that. But she's so sweet, so sweet. You'd love her. So I'm not going to go on rambling on and on. I'm going to finish up my Dr. Pepper. You know, Dr. Pepper is good. I really like it. So refreshing. And I just sip on it during the day. It's my it's my big treat. That's the thing I like to drink. I gave up Coke years ago, gave up Pepsi Cola. RC Cola was way back when we were kids and we put the peanuts in the RC bottle and we passed that bottle around. You did that too, didn't you? Yeah, I, I can see it now. I can see my younger brother, four or five boys standing. See, they couldn't all afford a bag of peanuts each or a bottle of RC Cola each. They poured those peanuts down in those bottles and passed it around. People worried so much about it catching something from the other kid these days. We played in the dirt and we drank after each other and we ate after each other. I never heard of anybody getting sick. Yes, time has changed. You can't even let the children out to play in the yard anymore. We hadn't had those big yards. I don't know what we'd have done. We did every pretend game you could do in our backyard. Tarzan and Jane, you're looking at Jane, yeah, climbing that big tall poplar tree, and it was big and it was tall. And Mama stepping out the back door every 30 minutes yelling, you kids get out of that tree, you're going to fall and break your neck. We'd come climbing down out of the tree. As soon as she got back in the kitchen, we'd climb back up again. Uh, we weren't afraid of Mama. So she was trying to keep us healthy and safe. She did her job. And we played in the backyard and we played pretend. And even today, I think, wouldn't it be fun if we could do those things again and laugh a lot? Oh, God, to laugh a lot. So that ends this little chit-chat, which amount to near nothing, but I did want to introduce you to Harry Truman from Mount St. Helens and that distant cousin. I'm sure he was a distant cousin. From the state of Washington. Now, how often do you meet somebody in a situation like that? All the way across the United States, he comes, and the person he has questioned to has the same name he has. Funny, isn't it? Well, you know, not funny, funny, but different, different. It's something you remember and think, gee, how strange these things happen. So I'm going to have my Dr. Pepper. This is my little canister I carry with me everywhere I go. Keep my 
I send it and I fill it full of Dr. Pepper. And I drink about two of these a day. That's not overdoing it, I don't think. So I'll have my Dr. Pepper to you. And you get you something to drink. And good night.